many teachers are using videos to supplement their classroom materials or add to what they're already doing in their classrooms. But as we know, that students can sometimes lose their engagement in their videos and teachers have no way of tracking progress. Edpuzzle is a great resource to help you kind of increase some student engagement and allow you to formatively assess what students are getting while watching the videos. Edpuzzle is a web-based tool, so I just log on to the website and I've created an account and I'm taken to my home screen here, which kind of just gives you some basic information. And then I have this navigation pane up here. The first one allows me to search Edpuzzle. And the great thing about Edpuzzle is what I can do is I can find videos and I can add audio, I can add quiz questions or open-ended questions, and I can crop videos to fit what works for my classroom. So here, from here, I can search videos that are in YouTube, Khan Academy, National Geographic, a, a, several teacher vetted resources. I can also just find a URL to a video and paste it in here and Edpuzzle will be able to pull it up for me. The nice benefit is I can look for Edpuzzle created videos. When I look for videos that were already created by other users, I can see that this little green circle lets me know that there are quiz questions associated with this video. This one lets me know that there's audio as well as quiz questions associated with this video. So I can kind of see what's attached. The ones that are blank just mean these are videos that I could pull in. So here we have a point of view video from Full Vocabulary. If I wanted to use that, I could, one, I could click on it. I could play it to see if it fits my content. And if I wanted to, I could use that video to create a lesson. Or I could save my content for later. Or I could simply share the video. Uh, let's scroll through here. We can see this video here with the red mark means it's been cropped. Okay, so it's but it was a longer video than six minutes and 36 seconds, but it's been cropped and it has quiz questions associated with it. The other thing I can do, and I'm gonna skip my content because we'll come back to that, is I can actually create classes. As you can see here, I have a couple of test classes. I have this one and then I have a test class and then an Edpuzzle 101 class. And from here, when my students log in, they will simply enter the course code for my class. And I will get a whole roster of my students. If I were to click on members, I get a roster of students. And I would be able to assign them work from Edpuzzle. So I'd actually be able to give them a video. I can also embed these videos into um, something like Schoology uh, or Moodle. Either way would work just fine, however you want your students to access them. So as you can see, this dashboard here tells me what um, videos I've assigned, um, what's upcoming in the future, some of my archived videos. To add a class, I simply click Add a Class. And the nice thing about that, I'm going to go back into the members, is if I ever get stuck, Edpuzzle has plenty of tutorials that I can quickly watch and figure out what I need to do. Let's go into My Content, and you can see here that I have this video that I've started, um, and so I'm, I'm about to use it for um, a resource and then I have a folder. I can create folders for my various classes. If I click here I could create a folder if I had a social studies course and I'm, oops, we'll just leave that tag and I'm going to save this folder and as I make my videos I can move them into specific folders to help me a little bit with uh, some of my organization. So let's click on a video as if we're going to create it. There's several ways to create it. I could have gotten a video from here. I can click create and create a new video or upload a video. And this is a video I want to edit. So our first screen when we get a video is this one. Um, you can see that as you're working at Edpuzzle, the stuff you do will generally be periodically saved, but you also have the option to save here or click done when you're ready to move on. And then I have my overall navigation. I have a cropping tool which allows me to crop a video. Now as we know if I'm going to show, if I find a video that's 45 minutes long I probably don't want to show the whole video to my students. So I might crop it to be something that's a little bit more manageable. If I'm confused as how to crop the video I just click show me how and I'll get a quick tutorial from Edpuzzle. And it's only 27 seconds so as you can see they're very brief, shows you exactly what you need to do. The next one is an audio track. And audio track, you can also click show me how, another 36 second video. But the audio track allows you to um, record a set of audio that is going to explain either the overall premise or the idea behind the video. And it's something that 
that lives with the video itself. So if I'm going to talk over this video, I might include an audio track. Audio notes are, as you can see when I click this, um, I get a little note here. I can put audio notes periodically throughout the video, and as a result, as my students are watching it, it will actually pause the video, my audio note will come up, and it will maybe, I want to highlight some important information, or I want to say, um, just remember the five points that the, the um, author made here, and my students would then have that information. And I think the most valuable is um, the quiz questions. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and you now can see that we have a green marker here. This little spot tells you where in the video that the quiz question is going to go, and I can always move it. Say I want it at the 1 minute 55 second mark, and I can play the video to find out as well. And once I click on it, there's three different types of quizzes I can create. I can create an open-ended question. I can create a multiple choice question, which is scored by Edpuzzle. So I could use it as a quick formative assessment if I wanted to, and it would automatically go into my student dashboard that I showed you before. And I can also just add a comment. So if I just wanted to say, don't forget that important point or an important point is coming up, I can throw that in there um, for my students. The nice thing about quiz questions is, just stick with multiple choice, um, I have a little bit of a rich text editor here, so I can do bold, underlining, um, some subscripts, I can add links. So if I was showing my students a video, but then I wanted them to pop out to, say, Schoology to go ahead and turn an assignment in, I could link them to the Schoology website. I can also add an image. So if I had an image that was associated with the content in this video, I could certainly throw that in there. And then I have some um, function tools, which for our math and science, you know, while it's there's not a lot of function tools, there are some different functionalities I can do here to actually create um, math and science functions inside of my quiz questions. So let's just say, um, for instance, let's start with a question that says, you know, which is the correct answer and then I would go down here and let's say my answer choice was A and another one was B I can add choices I can say this is the correct answer and this is the wrong one I can switch that up I can click preview and this is what it will pop up as a student so as the students watching the video they get to this point here this question it will pause the video it will pop up they will have to make an answer before they can move on so I go ahead and click save this is what the kid will get. They will get this button where they have to make an answer. They have to click continue before the video plays again. The video will not play until they've done whatever task comes up here. So I think this is a great feature of quiz questions. I don't know what question is. So I didn't go to school. Go. Anybody? And if I actually back up here, I'll get to the point where you can see what it would look like for a kid. So they're playing the video. Big. Is that the question? And pause the video. They now have the answer. I don't the know question. what question um, let's add one more. So let's move up a little bit. And so now you can see here's where I have my quiz question it is embedded here. Um, I can move it if I felt, you know what, I want this quiz question to come back here. So you can move them after they're not set in stone. So I could, you can see it was saved a few seconds ago, but I can save it again just to make sure. And let's just say I want to click done. When I click done, um, it's going to ask me what to fill in some information, save and exit, and here's the great part. I can assign the video to one of my classes, or, or both of my classes if I want to, and I think one of the best things I can do here is I can prevent skipping, and what this means is a student cannot skip any part of the content of the video. They literally have to play it from beginning to end, and as we know with a lot of videos, students will just pop on, they will go ahead and they will skip all the way to the quiz question, they'll answer it, and they will move on. With this, I know that they will have gone through 3 minutes and 55 seconds of a video because that's how long it was. I can also attach a due date. So if I want this video to be watched and done by the 26th, I can put that. I can adjust the times. And let's assign it to, we'll assign it to another class. And I'll just click send. So now what will happen is my dashboard, it will show me what I did. I can view this as a student. So this is what it looks like for a student. They get a video. There's their quiz question, so on and so forth. I go back to my dashboard. I can at any time check the progress. So what, and I don't have any students here, but what I can see is the kids who have not started, 
I can see the kids who need some help, kids who have done relatively well, and the kids who have done great. And um, then here I can also grade any open-ended questions that I have. So this, as I said, a great formative assessment tool because I can quickly see how my students did on that particular question or overall with this. And if I click this I, I get more info for this whole entire um, video. Let's just go back again to this. So here's our progress we can check. We can see how many students have completed it. Right now no one has. So there's no one in the class. I can see um, the due date, which I can quickly edit if I want to change it. And I can also see that I prevented the skipping, which I can change. I can also share this assignment. Um, I can share it with a different class, or I can here's my link or my embed code that I can then put this into Schoology or a different LMS, or I can delete it. So as I mentioned, Edpuzzle is a great tool to begin um, doing some flipping or even having students create their own Edpuzzles as they learn specific content and sharing them with other students to teach them the content. Um, really, it's wide open. If you need any help using Edpuzzle in your classroom, feel free to contact your iLearn specialist.